Okay, so um, actually I met Hubert Salou a very long time ago. Um, I was on sabbatical in France in 84, 85, and I actually shared an office with uh, Hubert. He was a graduate student at the time. And uh, I should say, I really enjoyed that year in France. I enjoyed France very much. And uh, it was also the year I switched from high energy theory to condensed matter theory. <clears throat> okay, so, um, right. So I want to talk about the Majorana Hubbard model in one dimension. Uh, I've actually studied the model also in two dimensions, but probably won't have time to discuss the two dimensional case. So my collaborators in one dimension were uh, Armin Romani, uh, who's now a professor at Western Washington University, uh, Marcel Franz, who's the, a joint uh, colleague of mine at UBC, and uh, Zhao Yu Zhu, who was a visitor from China for one year. So uh, here's the outline of the talk. I'll discuss the motivation and the model, uh, talk about the one-dimensional case, and then talk about uh, conclusions. If I have some time, I might uh, mention two-dimensional case. <clears throat> So motivation and model. Um, so uh, a microscope, macroscopic number of Majorana modes are predicted to occur if a layer of ordinary superconductor is placed on a strong topological insulator in a transverse magnetic field, as is uh, illustrated here. So uh, it's predicted that there's a Majorana mode at the center of every, uh, every vortex. So this has led to great interest in them. It's been the main focus of research at Microsoft Station Q. Charlie Marcus at the Niels Bohr Institute was one of the leading experimentalists working in the field. So various experimentalists have claimed to see Majorana fermions, but this has remained controversial. Interaction effects involving Majorana fermions have not yet been studied experimentally, but at least two experimental groups are interested in studying them to test our theoretical predictions. So Majorana mode is localized near the center of each uh, vortex and Majorana's modes can tunnel between vortices and interact with each other with uh, short range interactions proportional to exponential minus R over C, where C is the coherence length for the superconductor. <clears throat> and the tunneling amplitude goes to zero if the gate chemical potential of the topological superconductor is, uh, or of the uh, topological insulator, I guess I should say, is uh, tuned to a special value. So we studied simple as possible version of this model with shortest possible range interactions. We call this the Majorana Hubbard model. So we have a hopping amplitude T, we have interactions G, and we consider G over T a meter sine uh, because it could be attractive or repulsive. Sitting on top of a, being in a superconductor, we might expect it's attractive, but we consider either sine. So, so far we consider the one dimensional case <clears throat> and two dimensional square lattice and triangular lattice. <clears throat> So here's the one dimensional model. So we have nearest neighbor hopping, uh, gamma j, gamma j plus one. And we have uh, shortest possible range interactions, gamma j, gamma j plus one, gamma j plus two, gamma j plus three. Um, and uh, of course, gamma j is uh, it's a Majorana operator, so it's a remission. Gamma j dagger equals gamma j, and the any commutator is two delta jk. So there are no conserved particle number in the model, but important discrete symmetries and uh, can be studied by field theory and by DMRG. <clears throat> so we find that Majorana is like to pair up and form complex Dirac fermions. So we can define a, a, a Dirac fermion to be gamma 2j plus i gamma 2j plus 1 over 2. And then we can easily calculate that i gamma 2j gamma 2j plus 1 is twice C dagger J, C J minus one. So half of the interactions become quite simple in the uh, Dirac fermion notation, just uh, minus G sum over J, two C dagger J, C J minus one, two C dagger J plus one, C J plus one minus one. And note that there's a sign change because of the factor of I. So G bigger than zero is attractive and G less than zero is repulsive. There's no conserved charge so mean field three uh, is determined by interactions. Mean field density is determined by interactions. And there are two mean field ground states for positive G with attractive interactions. So two ways of pairing up the Majoranas, either we can combine the gamma two J with gamma two J plus one, or we can combine gamma two J minus one with gamma two J. 
And uh, for positive T, we find that uh, the mean field level, uh, once we form these complex fermions, they prefer to be empty. So we have these two simple ground states corresponding to empty Majorana fermions, which we, uh, we form by combining two Majoranas to form Dirac fermions in these two different ways. So we can rewrite the full Hamiltonian in a complex fermion basis, defining pj hat to be twice c dagger j c j minus one. So uh, we find that uh, a couple of terms become trivial. So uh, one of the hopping terms is just uh, t times pj hat. And uh, one of the interaction terms is just uh, g times minus pj pj plus one. Then we have some more complicated terms. Uh, the other hopping term is c dagger j minus cj, c dagger j plus one plus cj plus one. So it's a combination of a hopping term and a pairing term. And now we find that the other interaction term actually involves three lattice sites. And uh, it involves both hopping and pairing and the sign depends on whether pj plus one is positive or negative. So if we only keep the first t term and the first g term, this is the mean field theory. Remarkably, this turns out to be qualitatively correct at large enough g. So for g negative, repulsive interactions, there are actually four ground states because now uh, we, get, um, uh, we get alternating uh, empty field, empty field, and there's four different possible states. We verified that these phases actually occur at strong coupling using DMRG, which was done by, uh, by Armin Romani. So not an interacting model we can solve by Fourier transforming. So we can define gamma to gamma k to be square root of one over two L sum over J from zero to L gamma J uh, e to the ikj. So notice that gamma k is not uh, emission even though gamma J is. But notice that gamma minus k is gamma k dagger. So we can actually restrict ourselves to positive k. Then we can diagonalize for the non-interacting case. And we find the Hamiltonian becomes just uh, two T sum over k from zero to pi gamma k dagger gamma k sign k. And uh, notice that all states are empty in the ground state. So there are only particle excitations, not holes. This is a signature of uh, Majorana fermions in the, uh, in the Lorentz invariant model. So low energy excitations have linear dispersion and they're relativistic. And uh, we can define low energy effective Hamiltonian, which is relativistic by defining gamma j to be twice gamma r which depends on Vt minus uh, A times J, plus minus one to the J gamma to L, uh, which is a function of Vt plus A times J. And the low energy Hamiltonian is relativistic. It's just uh, relativistic Majorana fermions. So IV integral dx gamma R dx gamma R gamma minus gamma L dx gamma L. And gamma R and L are emission, and the velocity ends up being 4T. So these operators have scaling dimension one half. So the uh, non-directing Hamiltonian has dimension one. Lowest dimension continuum uh, interaction term is uh, minus 256G integral dx gamma R dx gamma R gamma L dx gamma L. We must have the derivatives because gamma R squared is simply one or the constant. So this has dimension four. So for small enough G, this is uh, strongly irrelevant. So we expect to get free Majorana's dispersion, at least for small enough g. So it's sufficiently small g, we find broken symmetry phases predicted by mean field theory. Remarkably, the transition for positive g occurs at g of 256. And for negative g, it occurs at g equals minus 3. So Paul Fendley actually invented a slightly different model than this, where the interactions were on sites 1, 2, four or five instead of one, two, three, four. And then the, uh, we had a similar phase diagram, but the transition occurred at much, much smaller G, it turned out. So uh, this very large value of G makes the numerics extremely challenging, but nonetheless, Armin Romani was able to, uh, to perform them. So the correlation length is infinite for G between zero and 256. It only comes down to perhaps a few hundred at G equals, equals infinity, which made the numerics challenging. So if the nature of the second order transition for G of 256 is interesting, 
So the critical line with G less than 256 corresponds to the one-dimensional quantumizing model. So H is sum over J minus sigma Z, J sigma Z, J plus one plus H sigma X, J. The critical point is that H equals one. So the symmetry that keeps the model critical is translation by one site, which takes gamma R to minus gamma R, forbidding the mass term gamma M gamma R gamma L. Corresponding symmetry in the Ising model is called Kramer's Wanya duality. This is a symmetry which takes H minus one to minus H minus one for H near one. It switches the broken and unbroken symmetry phases. So the Ising transition becomes first order if we insert a high enough density of randomly located vacancies. This transition can be realized by using S equals one spins instead of S equals one half, inserting an SZ squared term which favors SZ equals zero. So here is the model written in terms of the spin one um, spins. And here's the phase diagram as a function of gamma and uh, delta. So uh, for this region of gamma and delta, we have a second order transition. For this region, we have a first order transition. This is obvious, by the way, if gamma is zero, because then uh, we simply go from uh, uh, SZ being zero to SZ being one as we uh, move past the point delta equals one. So the uh, solid line is the second order transition. The dashed line is the first order transition. And the star marks a transition from second to first order. And this is called the tricritical Ising model. So this model is a supersymmetric conformal field theory. So for G slightly bigger than 256, we predict fermions and bosons of the same mass. So we have a uh, supersymmetry which persists into this broken symmetry phase. And this was uh, first shown by uh, 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 Schenker and collaborators a long time ago. So here's the phase diagram for the one-dimensional case. So uh, for uh, G close to zero, we have the Ising phase. For G uh, bigger than uh, this critical point, we, we go into this broken symmetry phase. And um, actually, these supersymmetry is spontaneously broken in the Ising phase, as was shown by Schenker et al. Um, and it, it, the supersymmetry actually persists in this, uh, this uh, two-fold degenerate broken symmetry phase. And then we have two other interesting phases here. We have the one predicted by mean field theory, fourfold degenerate, but we also have another interesting phase, which is uh, characterized by combination of Ising and Lutter liquid. And this transition is, is the Lifshitz transition. And by the way, if, if G over T is infinity, these two points are actually equivalent because now uh, we can have actually uh, either the, uh, the broken symmetry phase, the, the states can be empty or filled. So we get fourfold degeneracy. So there's a remarkable intermediate transition for G negative, which occurs at about G if, is minus 0.3. This can be understood from uh, interactions modifying the dispersion relation for the free Majorana fermions. So a second neighbor hopping term is not allowed by symmetry. The symmetry is time reversal. It takes i to minus i, gamma j to minus one to the j, gamma j. But a third neighbor hopping term is allowed. This gets generated by interactions. So this modifies the dispersion relation to uh, 2t sine k plus 2t3 sine 3k. And uh, here is a, a sketch of what the non-interacting dispersion relation looks like. So for T3 equals zero, uh, we've already shown we have uh, just the uh, two Majorana modes. For T3 of T over three, we actually have a cubic dispersion relation here. So this, that's why this is a Lifshitz transition. Then for T3 bigger than T over three, we actually get uh, Majorana modes at zero and pi, but we also get um, uh, complex fermions. Um, so relativistic, uh, Dirac fermions at uh, k0 and pi minus k0. And uh, if we calculate the interaction term, uh, we get a, a, a typical uh, complex fermion term involving the Dirac fermions, g1 psi right dagger, c right, psi left dagger, psi left. And this determines the um, Lettinger parameter. Then we also have another term which couples the Majorana modes to the uh, Dirac fermions, but this is irrelevant. And 
Then we have another term, which is irrelevant for repulsive interactions. So the second term is irrelevant. It's also a term that alternates with wave vector determined by k0. So it, it has exponential of i for k0 minus pi times x. And now we have, we must have derivatives. So it's psi right dagger dx psi right dagger psi left dx psi left minus remission conjugate. So this is irrelevant unless the repulsive interactions are very strong. So if uh, k is less than one quarter, and this oscillates unless k0 is pi over four. So this transition into the c equals three halves phase at g equals minus 0.3 is a Lifshitz transition, not relativistic uh, cubic dispersion relation. But the transition out of the c equals three halves phase into the strong coupling broken symmetry phase occurs at g equals minus three. This occurs because k goes to one quarter and k0 goes to pi over four simultaneously. So uh, the, the fact that this occurs means that uh, this stops oscillating and this becomes marginal at the same point. So uh, this is reminiscent of another transition studied uh, a long time ago uh, in, the, in the ordinary Dirac fermion model. Um, so we get the simultaneous transition where k goes to one quarter, k0 goes to pi over four simultaneously. And we calculated uh, the Luttinger parameter k and, and the, uh, the wave vector k0 using DMRG. We got the finite size spectrum and came to this remarkable conclusion. Okay, so uh, let me now move on to my conclusions and maybe I'll just uh, touch briefly on the, the two-dimensional case since I have a little bit of time left over. So the conclusions are that the Majorana Hubbard model in various lattices has a rich phase diagram. Majorana's like to pair up to form complex fermions for strong enough coupling. And this breaks the discrete symmetries. And supersymmetry can be realized in both one and two dimensions. So I have about uh, seven minutes left, so let me discuss briefly the two-dimensional case. So we, discussed, we uh, studied the two-dimensional square lattice case. And uh, this is the model we considered. So again, we took shortest possible range hopping, but um, there's a condition that we want to have one uh, flux quantum per, uh, per plaquette, and that actually requires this uh, minus sign in the uh, vertical hopping term. And uh, we can take the interaction terms to be on uh, plaquettes, so shortest possible range Hubbard type interaction. And we also considered a second neighbor hopping. So gamma m, 2n gamma um, uh, m plus s gamma 2n plus s prime. So T2 term breaks time reversal symmetry and parity symmetry and changes the phase diagram significantly. So the phases are characterized by, by spontaneously broken symmetries. So what are the symmetries of H which might get broken? So there's translation by one site in the X or Y direction. There's also pi over two rotation symmetry. If T2 is zero only, there's time reversal. And there's also a parity a spatial reflection. And a combination of parity and time reversals is symmetry, even for T2 non-zero. In addition, there are some emergent symmetries in the low energy effective field theory. So these pairing symmetries uh, also break rotational symmetry and parity symmetry for T2 equals zero. And again, they depend on the sign of G. So we can obtain a ferromagnetic or anti-ferromagnetic pairing phases uh, for uh, positive G. So again, uh, we, we combine Majoranas to form Dirac fermions. And again, these fermions are empty. So uh, we, have, we can either do it uh, forming vertical pairs or horizontal pairs. So altogether, we have four ground states for uh, positive G. And for negative G, uh, we actually get uh, eight ground states because uh, we can pair up the Majoranas to form Dirac fermions uh, two different ways. And uh, we can either, again, we have empty field, empty field. So altogether, we have eight different states. So these pairing phases also break rotational symmetry and parity symmetry for T2 equals zero, and they break time reversal because time reversal takes gamma mn to minus one to the m plus m gamma mn, and i to minus i. And this is broken by the uh, T2 term. So we can also study this in the field theory. So uh, we can calculate the uh, exact dispersion relation for the non-interacting model. And this is what it looks like. 
and again, be, because of the uh, uh, because we're dealing with uh, myronic fermions, and because we have this alternating sign, we can restrict uh, the bull one zone to uh, kx between zero and pi, and ky between minus pi over two and pi over two. So this is the dispersion relation. So for t2 much less than t, we have low energy excitations near the two points in case phase zero zero and pi zero, where we have Lorentz invariants. And uh, even including the T2 term, uh, for small enough uh, T2, again, we have a uh, Lorentz invariant dispersion relation, but now it's gapped. So K squared plus a, a mass term. So we have two valleys, like in graphene, but we have Majorana fermions. So the low energy theory has two species of two component Majorana fermions, which we can, can be combined into a uh, Dirac species of uh, single species of Dirac fermions. So ignoring, ignoring uh, higher derivative terms, the Lagrangian density, including interactions, is Lorentz invariant. So we have a uh, Lorentz invariant uh, uh, non-interacting term, and then we have an uh, interacting term. So the gamma u's are the usual three two-dimensional gamma matrices, and I've set the velocity to one. And psi bar, as usual, is psi dagger gamma zero. So two components from inequivalent even non rows. In addition to emergent Lorentz invariance, there's also an emergent U1 particle number conservation because uh, th this, both these terms preserve U1 symmetry. So the interactions are irrelevant in the normalization group sense if the bare G is small enough, it normalizes to zero, giving an effective free fermion phase. The interaction term in the low energy theory can be written this way. So for G positive, this is an attractive pairing interaction. So we get a transition to a superfluid phase for strong enough positive G corresponding to a ferromagnetic uh, pairing phase, also higher dimensional U1 breaking terms. For T2 equals zero, fermions are massless in the G less than G0 phase. At the superfluid transition, we get a massless Goldstone boson as well as massless fermions. This transition is supersymmetric, equivalent fermions and bosons. This has been studied in other condensed matter contexts, but it's remarkable here that U1 symmetry is emergent. A non-zero T2 gives fermions a mass. Now we get the usual superfluid transition, so the usual Wilson-Fisher transition, uh, so a, a breaking of two plus one dimensional uh, symmetry. There's a UN breaking term in the effective Hamiltonian, psi one dx psi one, psi two dx psi two, but this is even higher dimension. This is dimension six, so I studied this with my graduate student, Kyle Waymer. We showed using an epsilon expansion that uh, this remains irrelevant at the critical point using the epsilon expansion. So notice that this lattice model evades the nielsen Romia theorem. We only get one channel of Lorentz invariant fermions in the low energy theory. And this is the reason that U1 symmetry is broken in the lattice model. Okay, so uh, we studied this model on ladders. So the two dimensional ladder um, we can actually solve exactly. We have a, a U1 symmetry. We can define uh, CM to be gamma M0 plus I minus 1 to be M gamma M1. Horizontal hopping term becomes 2IT CM dagger CM plus 1 minus Hermitian conjugate. The vertical hopping term is just uh, minus 1 to the M CM dagger CM. So if we impose periodic boundary conditions, this maps into the jordan Wigner term. And uh, we can... Uh, go from uh, Majoranas to complex fermions, and we find that, in fact, the, uh, the broken symmetry phases that occur for strong enough G in the uh, spin model actually correspond exactly to the uh, predicted phases, broken symmetry phases that we predict by mean field theory. So uh, this actually confirms the mean field theory predictions. Okay, so I think my time is up, so I'll stop there and take any questions. Thank you. Do you hear me? Uh, we have lost Ian. Ah, there he is. Robert, if you're asking a question, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was waiting this. Yeah, actually, I do have a question for you. I was, okay, yep. I've, been, I've been thinking about realizing, actually, material realization to try critical easing. And it's not hard. It's hard to find an actual spin chain material that would 
that would realize it and have, have the right crystal fields and spin orbit. But I'm wondering if this would be a better platform and whether when you perturb into the, the broken phase uh, away from the, tri the, the tricritical easing point, you have some understanding of what uh, the operators are in terms of the scaling fields of tricritical easing. Yeah, actually, right now we're working on tr trying to uh, write a paper on the uh, on the the, uh, the, the one-dimensional model for strong enough G, where we think uh, the translation symmetry is broken, but we think the supersymmetry is still present. So we now have uh, solitons and anti-solitons, and uh, okay. it turns out that uh, we think the soliton and anti-soliton is a simultaneous uh, fermion and boson, which, which have the same mass. So this, this is how supersymmetry gets realized, we think, in this phase. Now, I hope we'll finish up a paper on this soon. Yeah, because this certainly looks like a more, I mean, potentially a more tunable platform than any material. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, I agree. Good question. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Hubert has a question. Yep. Hello, Ian. Are you back? Can you hear me? Ah, Hi, Hubert. Yes. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can hear you, yes. <laughs> so I was a bit confused. In, two, in 2D, you say there's a emergent U1 symmetry in the continuum limit. What what is the yep. what is the microscopic expression of the U1 generator that becomes indeed this U1 in the continuum? What is it that becomes conserved? Uh, okay, so uh, we can combine the two <coughs> Majorana fermions to form a uh, Dirac fermion. So we form this comp two component complex Dirac fermion psi. <clears throat> so I guess we get four, we, get, we all get it, we get four Majoranas because uh, we're, uh, the, the Hilbert space <clears throat> gets reduced <clears throat> sort of twice um, because of uh, the re reduction <clears throat> from the complex, the, the, the Fourier transforming, and also because we have this sign alternation in the hopping term, which uh, is, uh, appears, uh, appears here. <clears throat> so this leads us to uh, to, to a two-component Dirac fermion, and uh, th this uh, interaction term preserves the U1 symmetry, but uh, this this one actually uh, breaks it. However, this one we showed is is actually irrelevant using okay. the epsilon expansion uh, of the critical point. I see, I so therefore, we have an emergent U1 symmetry. Okay, I think good I question. Thanks. I, I had another question in 1D. Yeah when there's a transition away yep. from the C equals three half, and you're saying the dispersion relation is cubic. Is this a numerical observation, or is, can you yeah. show it analytically? Is it easy to understand? We showed it, we showed it analytically using DMRG. So, so oh, uh, okay. d just considering not interacting model, we predict it to be cubic, and we, ch we checked that uh, using DMRG. I see. And indeed, it was cubic. Okay, it's an intriguing result. Okay. All right, thank you, Ian. Yes, it is, yeah. You're welcome. Uh, thank you very much. I think Any more questions? Um, I don't know. I think not. So thanks very much, and thanks everyone that spoke uh, this evening, everyone that was online, in fact, today. So see you tomorrow. <laughs>